welcome back to the channel everyone and if you can please remember to like and share the video so others can find it and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel to help me reach a thousand subscribers again thank you for joining me today and if you remember the last video one of the last videos that I did was the Moor who conquered Spain well we talked about how the Moors got into Spain but we now need to talk about what happened once they were there so we're gonna get into that story but first I want to talk about what exactly is a Moor growing up I was taught that the word Moor meant black and that it was the term that was used in early Europe to refer to the black people that lived there I didn't know anything about Spain conquering um, or the Moors conquering Spain or anything like that I just knew the definition of Moor as it was taught to me and as I read it but now as I study the Moors I have noticed that the definition says that a Moor are the Muslims who conquered Spain or Moor is a Muslim which has basically removed the blackness from the word and has centered it around a religion by centering it around the Muslim religion or any religion you're basically opening the door for a more to be any color and that point I want you to keep in mind as I illustrate some things later in this video but the question is not what do people today call a more what did the people who lived in early Europe back then who lived with these people what did they call them that's the most important thing and as I have looked through research papers and old older documents and texts I have found that the word more back in early Europe meant black or African or black or Negroid I have found both of those definitions written out and when we look at people like William Shakespeare who wrote one of his most famous pieces Othello that we all know he utilized the word more not just in that but in some of his other writings and for him he stated that the word more was black or African and it is said that he used it interchangeably for either one then as we move into modern day times we have great historians like Chancellor Williams who said and I quote the first Moors were black Africans much as the first Egyptians and this makes a lot of sense to me because as you look back at the history of Europe and you look at some of the oldest um, archaeological remains that they have found as illustrated in the video that I made about Cheddar Man you see that like for that particular um, archaeological find Cheddar Man that was the they, they were the first people of Europe who were black when you look at the oldest remains found in Spain they are black as well and so black or melanated people have been on the European continent since early time they are the original inhabitants and then when you also think about the amount of migration out of Africa over time not just one specific time period but just over time it would make sense that as people migrated out they didn't just go to Australia and um, India China and other Asian continents or the Americas or the Pacific Islands they went to every continent so Africans actually inhabited every continent before any other people that includes Europe so you have your early man and then you have those who just came along various waves just over centuries and centuries so yes I can believe and see that there were or would have been black people on the continent of Europe 
before the Moors came along and invaded and conquered Spain. But many European countries today and over the last few hundred years have made a lot of effort to erase the Moorish part of their history, Spain and Italy being among some of the top ones. There has been much documented about the existence of melanated people on the continent, but a lot of concerted effort by Spain and the rulers who came along after the Moors were pushed out in 1492 a lot of the rulers that came along really erased the memories and the history of the Moors. And even to this day, as you can see from one, from one of the articles I posted, they're still trying to remove any signs or remnants of Moors in the country. Also, I came across a couple of articles um, um, in Italy that were basically stating, one in particular stated that the, when the Moors invaded and uh, took over Sicily, that they were Caucasian Moors, they were Caucasian Arab Moors, and that there were no black Moors, um, which was kind of odd to see in a paper, especially one that was actually published. But they're in essence saying that they were not conquered by black people that, okay, yes, some Moors came in and took us, but they were Caucasian. And they put up illustration of images to show what they would have looked like back then with these Moors. So it's really weird to me when I watch what's going on with Egyptian history or ancient Kemet history. And then I watch or rather look at some of these papers and things and see this attempt to erase the blackness in these areas it's really strange but that's the nature of the beast that you're dealing with another thing that I found when studying exactly what is a moor I found in a writing where they described two types of moors in Europe they described the Muslim moor and the African moor or those who were non-Muslim but were of African descent. So you had those who were of African descent who were Muslim and those who were not. So they referred to them as Muslim Moors and African Moors. And I thought that was very interesting and very telling and very contradictory to the concept that Moors were just about the Muslims who invaded Spain. We know that there were black people or melanated people in what is now Europe before the Moors came. That's been established scientifically. You can find that through other research papers and historical documents. So that's no question. The only difference is when the Moors came, they pulled Europe out of their dark ages and brought the light, so to speak, to Europe. But the black populations within the European continent, as the palm-colored population or white populations grew, they experienced more and more jealousy, racism, hatred, as is common in what we see today. And there was just a very strong desire to get rid of them as you can see in this paper, it talks about Queen Elizabeth I. And this paper basically was stating that there were so many Moors in uh, London, in um, the UK at the time that, they, that she wanted them deported. Um, I guess I shouldn't call it the UK because it wasn't quite that at that time, but it was Britain and they she wrote a letter in 1596 to the mayor of London and she wanted uh, the Blackamoors to be removed from the city from the country as a whole actually and then 
she wrote another letter a week later stating that there are too many blackamoors in their country and she wanted them deported and in 1601 she again contacted the mayor stating that there's too many blackamoors and nagars and to read it and it says in 1601 she complained again about the great numbers of nagars and blackamoors which are crept into this realm so when we talk about the nagars and the blackamoors as she refers to them we are not referring to slaves as you see in this paper they are referred to as immigrants specifically european immigrants and they did not have all of the same rights of citizenship they were taxed their residency was restricted um they they didn't have all of the rights that the whites had but they were considered to be european immigrants and i think this is telling of just how many black people were not just in britain but in europe as a whole you could find them from western europe to eastern europe from britain to russia and every place in between and they held all positions of society they were kings they were queens they were lords they were generals they were peasants they were just everyday people living their lives and trying to survive so to sum it all up a moor was someone who at the time the white people who referred to them re were re referencing their skin color not just the religion of being a Muslim because of the fact it was specified that there were Muslim Moors and African Moors so while all Moors contributed greatly to the continent of Europe and to the societies there it is when the Muslim Moors arrived that Europe was propelled into the age of enlightenment so guys that's all I have for you in this video I just wanted to just do a really quick definition of exactly what a Moor is based on the use at the time and not based on what people have redefined it as hundreds of years or even a thousand years later as always I hope you enjoyed this video stay tuned for the next part to come where we discuss what happened once the Moors conquered Spain what happened next stay tuned for that and as always remember to like share and subscribe and I will see you soon